Mm. Oh, here we go. Oh, we live. We're live. This is gonna be. We're live. <laughs> I like oh, the beat. Happy, Happy Friday. Friday. Happy Friday. Oh, How- <laughs> Jinx. You know, you already know. Caleb and me are jinxing all day long, dude. <laughs> Happy Friday. I mean, there's not a unique thought that goes through our minds, man. You think it and I think it at the same time. I don't know why. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's uh it's a, gonna be a great day, guys. It's Friday and we got Ryan Kensler on the call. What, Ryan, we're so happy you're here, man. Um, for those of you that don't know Ryan, he is a vital, 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 vital member of the ad class crew, the ad class family, and he has built some of the highest converting funnels that Dakota and I have ever worked on. He's a, he's an yes. incredible designer, incredible at funnel building conversions. And so today we're going to be talking about how to do split testing in your marketing funnel to make sure that you're optimizing for those conversions and getting the best results possible. So we're really pumped. Ryan, welcome. Welcome to the squad, bro. I thank you. The, the Facebook Live squad. <laughs> Facebook Live squad. Yeah, you've been part of the squad, but now you're yeah, officially yeah. in the Facebook Live fold. How's it feel? Yeah. It feels awesome. I would just like <laughs> to say before before we hop into this, pretty much everything I know I learned from Caleb and Dakota. Um, and when I first started working with Caleb, I was a little funnel guy. It's <laughs> a little temple. It's a little a funnel and automations guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, and now if you, if you guys don't know, Ryan does so much more than just funnel work. Um, he's responsible for so much of the client growth and strategy that happens at Ad Class, and like I said before, just an absolutely vital member of the family. So um, yeah, guys, yeah. Uh, this is going to be a really valuable call. Um, Dakota, what are we what are we going to dive into first? Thing? We are talking about split testing today. So. You know, you might hear people talk about A-B tests, split tests, right? Especially in the advertising world, you're going to start, you know, if you're getting into marketing or advertising or anything, it's like one of the main things they're going to teach you. You know, I'm not a real proponent on, on college, as everybody knows, even though I went to college and did the whole master's thing and everything, I still don't know how much I, I love college. But in marketing school, the very first thing they tell you about it, apart from personas, right? They love to talk about personas. After personas, they go into split testing. And there's a reason for it because split testing is really super vital to succeeding in marketing. And when we talk about split testing, really what we're talking about is taking what you're already doing, right? Or like uh, like the, the basically the control, right? When we talk about split test, we have the control, which is like what you're already doing, what's probably working for you. Hopefully it's working and then improving on it and testing one variable to see if you can get better results than what you're currently getting. Split yeah. testing is not just a marketing thing. Like split testing is something you should probably be doing in your normal day-to-day life, right? What split testing isn't is throwing out what you're currently doing and changing everything and going on to a new thing, right? Why doesn't that work? Anybody, Caleb, Ryan, why doesn't it work when you throw out the whole don't... thing? You don't know if your variation's gonna work. That's right, dude. You don't know. Well, I mean, you even if it does work, you don't necessarily know why it worked, right? Like, yeah. let's say you did throw out everything. You know, let let's just say, like, you know, let's let's take it out of the marketing context for just a second. You know, Ryan loves his his cocoa eats in the morning, right? That's that's his breakfast cereal of choice. Let's just say that Ryan oh. has, uh, you know some he just not feeling too good in the mornings anymore right Mm. and there's like a series of things that he does every morning he wakes up let's just say in this fictional universe he has a cup of coffee he has his cocoa eats and then he goes for a run right and he's like man you know i just don't feel very good in the morning anymore after i do all these three things what he shouldn't do is stop doing all three things Mm. and then go on with his life because if he starts feeling better he's like oh man yeah it's probably because i stopped running eating my cocoa wheats and having that cup of coffee in the morning no we don't know which one it was it was probably one of those three things you know it's probably the cocoa wheats since it's just made of maltodextrin which is basically just a corn uh you know just corn grain mashed he's just, up he's roasting cool. he's roasting your breakfast of choice Ryan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dude, I, I grew up out of it's okay um but <laughs> what i'm trying to say is he should remove one thing from his routine and then see how he feels right oh i removed the cup of coffee still not feeling great okay so it wasn't the cup of coffee 
I removed the, you know, running still not feeling great. Wasn't the running. Oh, I removed the cocoa eats. Now I'm feeling really good. Right. Just as an example. So that's honestly the, you know, split testing in a nutshell, all we're trying to do is take what's currently going on and test one variable. And when we test that one variable, now we know how the outcome is affected based on that one thing that we changed. Right. And then we can basically say, Oh, that helped that either helped it or that hurt it. Now let's make that the control and let's test another thing. Right. Simple yep. as that. Caleb, anything to add on split testing? That's kind of the way I think about it. No. Yeah. At a high level, that's, that's, that's where I would say we start now, Ryan, I'm about to pass it to you. There's going to be two main things that we go over in this Facebook live training. Okay. The first section of this is going to be, what are the top three things that are going to impact your conversions the most when you do split testing on a landing page. Okay. So that's yep. a really important question to ask, right? If you're going to change something, what are the three biggest things that you could change that are going to have the biggest impact, right? So that's the first half of this training. Second half of this training is we're going to be going over a platform called Mixpanel, which is the yep. ad class platform of choice that we use whenever we're doing split tests for our clients um, at scale. So, uh, Ryan, I'm going to pass it over to you, man, um, to go ahead and uh, share your screen and kind of do your thing, man. But yeah, tell us what are the top three things that make the biggest impact when you're going to do a split test? Oh, yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's share that entire screen. All yeah. right. I think the best way to visualize this, can you guys see my screen? Uh, yeah, let me. Uh, there we go. There we go. Here we go. Cool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Ah, there we go. I think the best, the best way to visualize how this all works is with ClickFunnels. Uh, it's one of our favorite uh, marketing funnel builds for paid traffic for websites. Um, and it's literally as simple as here's our control. And then we split 50% of traffic going to this URL to a new page where we can test things. So let's just hop into this variation and we'll, we'll kind of look at it. So what you guys can kind of see from here, I will duplicate this bad boy what you can see from here is we have two different headlines this one has profitable social media ads this one has profitable ads so that brings us to the first thing to change and the first thing to test when you're trying to split test increase conversions and in effect lower your costs is test messaging messaging Mess is the biggest biggest thing that you can do to your landing page to increase conversions um, and that said, it's not like, oh, I want to test, you know, something that I think might do better. What you want to do is base it all in what's actually performing currently. So a lot of the things that we test in our funnel is what are the headlines that for Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok ads that people are clicking on the most. So let's actually include that in our landing page and make it flow cohesively. Um, mm. You want to start there. Um, that is the number, number one thing that can definitely increase your conversions on the page is the messaging yes. and why people are wanting to opt in. For example, um, for our ad class VSL funnel, we're teaching people how to run paid ads themselves. We uh, first started running without this banner at the top. So on mobile, it looks like this. First started running without that um, and conversions were a little bit lower. But once we added that, that basically tells people exactly who we're looking for. And if you resonate with that, then this is for you. Um, so that was just something that we tested that increased conversions um, and was just a great, great way to tie the ad messaging and the front end to the landing page and kind of trying yeah. to package it in a way someone opts in. So Ryan, exactly what for. would you say that that, that, that is, so how do you know what's working on the ad messaging? Like, I guess uh, somebody's question might be, okay, cool, but I'm not testing headlines on the ads, right? So how would I know mm -hmm. what, what I should be testing? You know, it, if I'm only running one headline on the ads, for example, how do I know what, what should I change this to, right? What would you say that they should mm -hmm. go from there? Yeah, then I would say, look at, you know, whatever you're sending this traffic to, whether it's a VSL, uh, a case study video, you know, an ebook, whatever that content is, try and extract mm -hmm. stuff from that. Um, that's like the unique selling point to that offer. Um, and just try to like reposition headlines, try and come up with different things um, that flows with that second piece of content um, and just keep testing that if you don't have anything cool. front end going. 
That makes sense. Yeah. And, and I think what you said about like making it cohesive is so important. We call that like another way we, we call that is congruence, right, Caleb? So we always preach on funnel congruence, which is like basically if your ad says something, your landing page needs to reiterate, reemphasize and say that thing you know, in either a better way or in a similar way. Right. So if your ads are about how to run profitable social media, you know, ads, then your landing page also needs to be about that. And I think a lot of people yep. miss that. They go into the split test and they're like, ah, let's just try out this new thing. And then the ad never, never really resonates that same message. So they're like, Oh, mm -hmm. why are people clicking and then bouncing off my page? It's because you didn't prep them for it. Right. At the ad level. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, yep. exactly. Every, all the messaging has to be aligned for sure. So mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's, that's a great tip. Um, one other little mini thing to add there and it's, we just put it there on the bottom, but like a great formula to start with this. If you're like, I don't know how to write a great hook when you're going to start your split test. Great way to start is just how to get results without pain. Right. So think about mm -hmm. your target market, what result do they want? And then what's the pain that they're experiencing? Um, right there. You can see Ryan's kind of showcasing that on the screen. So, um, Ryan, anything else on the first point or do we want to jump into number two? Yeah. I mean, that's everything for the first, unless we have questions, but we can totally jump into the second point. I'm ready. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Go for it, man. All right. Second point. Second thing you want to test on your AB split test is design. So design is, um, colors on the page. It's, you know, uh, button fonts, button sizes, um, literally color and the flow of how things are structured um that that definitely is a big factor in you know how some things can convert versus others um so that can look like you know taking uh you know a different uh different font um maybe a smaller headline driving emphasis to the sub headline like this um maybe if we wanted to see if we can get a better conversion what we could do is maybe make this um, a lighter color and drive assist to watch training. Um, so people, their eyes are drawn to that. Or maybe we want to uh, change this to a different color. Maybe we want to do uh, red, which drives, um, red is uh, historically proven to drive the most conversions. There's a lot of studies done on yep. how colors can correlate with action. Um, so red kind of means, you know, take action. Uh, whereas blue is a little bit, um, a little bit less aggressive. Um, green obviously is our brand color. So we stuck with that, but you definitely want to avoid using colors like this. Um, something like, <laughs> like that. Don't, you don't want to blend in with the background. Um, right. Button colors yeah. is obviously the biggest thing that you want to be testing when you're doing design. In addition to cool. fonts, um, the key is easy. Is it easily, uh, readable, easily readable, not easily. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that's not uh, a word, Ryan? I mean, maybe it is. I just made it up. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, well, it. That sounded legit. Easily readable. Easy, easily. easily readable. <clears throat> um, so one other thing I just want to jump in really quick uh, for, for those watching is that um, design is a great thing to test, but also I would say, I just want to make it clear that when we say design, the design is focused on conversion. Okay. Um, this is a huge distinction. Um, and I think one of the things that we, as a team here, we run into when we're working with other people um, on their landing pages is most people and most business owners, they are attached to like beauty and making sure that uh, the, the page is like as gorgeous as it can be. And people get there and they're wowed and stunned by how amazing the page looks. And the, the sad reality is that you can have a gorgeous page that looks impressive and also sells to no one and converts absolutely zero people, right? So yeah. your first concern as a business owner is not, hey, ma let me make this look pretty. It's, hey, how do I make people do the thing on this page that I want them to do, right? And we've seen some of the ugliest funnels <laughs> uh, be some of the highest converting funnels, right? Um, now, I will yeah. say, just as a final note, Ryan's one of the few talented people that I've seen do a really great job of both making a page look great <laughs> and convert. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's not something I would say that everybody has to focus on is, is the beauty aspect, right? Dude, so, I was thinking the same thing, Caleb, and I was going to actually just ask Ryan, like, Ryan, how do you sort of merge those two worlds? Because you're a 
a really talented yeah. designer, I would say, you know, and, and like everything you come up with is beautiful usually. So how have you kind of been able to take like what works conversion wise and also make it beautiful? Because what we see a lot of is like, you know, those click funnels funnels, right? Most people have a stigma against click funnels, which is what you were just showing, you know, us right there, because mm -hmm. a lot of times what people build in click funnels is pretty dang ugly, but what you're able to come up with is usually, you know, good looking. Um, so what, what would you say? I know we're talking about AB testing, but this is more of like a funnel question. What would you say? Like, how are you able to kind of merge those two things? Yeah, I would definitely say the key, um, is, you know, at the source, it is an ugly landing page. Like it's not driving emphasis to an image. It's not like really cool background with animations, how like a lot of organic sites are. Um, so at the base, at the core, it's still structured around headline and then opt-in. Um, mm -hmm. But the key is using fonts that are, you know, really cool. Roberto is a really, really good font that we literally use for everything. We use it for Sub2, Astro, um, a lot of our other clients that in the past that we've used it for and currently, and even for Ad Class Accelerator for paid ads. Um, it's just something that looks really, really professional. Um, but also very easy to read. You obviously want to avoid using too fancy of fonts. Like um, you don't don't want to use something like um, let's see, Proxima Nova is a font that looks really really cool. Um, oh here, let me let me do images. Proxima Nova is a really cool font, but it's kind of hard to read instantly. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to make sure that you're sticking with something that's easy to read, but also doesn't look like totally lame um, <laughs> in the next yeah. um, yeah. but just something that's very clean, very easy to read. And then the second part to that is tying your colors together. So using good colors that flow, uh, making sure things are spaced out properly. Um, yeah, spacing is also big. So you can see how all this is kind of an even spacing. And then the email and button pop are kind of a little bit lower or button uh, submission. And then the logo at the top is a little bit higher. So it's just kind of about um, the fonts that you're using, the colors, the spacing, the kind of grouping things together. So you can see all of this is grouped together. The logo is kind of its own widget. And the headline or the uh, email uh, option and the button is its own thing too. So that's kind of cool. a, uh, a little deep dive you make it sound easy it's not easy but you make it sound easy so great work <laughs> thanks i just wanted to show an example so sub two uh this is obviously paste morby this is a page that's like very very simple right um has very limited things on here um and we actually have some friends who are working on this too um mm -hmm. so very very simple driving emphasis to hey this is what we want you to do but it is a kind of cool page um, I'm really interested to see how this converts. Um, but also another option is Pace Morby's actual organic site. So if mm -hmm. you go here, um, obviously, oh, that's, uh, something else. Let's see. I want to go to his, here we go. Check this out. Beautiful website, animations, all that fun stuff, but no place to actually drive conversions. Right. Not a, not a clear um you know message on like here's how you should opt in so you never want to um use an organic a website like this landing page to send traffic you always want something yeah. like the previous um something that has... something that isn't leaky right so yeah so notice notice for for all those watching right go back really quick um ryan to your google search Notice how when he searched Pace Morby, right, the sponsored result up top where they're running ad traffic, they're spending their money is on that simple, basic page, right? Meanwhile, the actual organic result they're not spending money on is that page right there, which was the beautiful really animations smart. and all that, right? So right. so that's it's huge to notice that um, it's, it's not about beauty when it comes to paid advertising, right? Where they're spending yep. their money is on that simple page. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I think, I think the other way to say it too, is like never send traffic to your website homepage, like never ever pay money to send traffic to your homepage. The reason isn't because it's not beautiful. You know, people are always like, but I spent all this money, like on a website designer, they made me a beautiful page. Here you go. Yeah. Here's adclass.com. Show that one back real quick, Ryan. Yep. So to, to prove our point here, we will never send 
traffic to our homepage here at class.com. Why? Because there's too many things to look at. There's too many options. There's too many, you know, buttons to press. And what we call that is a leaky funnel, right? Imagine a funnel you want, you know, a real funnel in real life. Let's say you're trying to funnel gasoline into your car, right? You don't want to pour gasoline into the funnel and have holes on the sides of it and it gets all over you. And you know, then you light on fire and have to stop, drop and roll. You don't want that. What you want is, you know, a really nice funnel that takes people from the start to the finish, right? No stop, drop and roll funnels. We want, we want the, you know, the safe ones. Uh, and so this is what we would send traffic to what Ryan's showing here. Why? Because there's one option. Pro tip, don't light yourself on fire. Yes, there's one option here and all it is, is email. Put your email in to get what we're, you know, what we want to send you. Once you do that, boom, next page in the funnel. It's very much a controlled environment, right? It's a conversion focused environment. And so this is, this is kind of coming back to split testing really quick here, because that's kind of what we're talking about. Why this is important is because now when we're talking about variables to change on that first page, if you go back real quick, Ryan, how many variables can we even look at changing here? There's really only like five or six things, right? There's the design, like Ryan said, there's the headline, there's the like sub headline, there's, you know, the sub sub headline, and then there's the submission box, right? And the image, I guess. All of those things are little things that we could tweak and just watch. How does it, how does it change the performance, right? And that's what Ryan's about to get into. How do you track whether or not your split test is doing better or worse, right? So I yes. want Ryan to sh sh show us his genius here because this is what he spearheads for us at, at ad class and it's mm -hmm. it's really impressive so yeah yes so obviously you want to be able to track what's actually happening and unfortunately click funnels is a great platform to test that stuff but their tracking is not that accurate um so what we do instead is we use this platform called mix panel where we can install html code kind of like facebook uh conversion tracking um, and Google Tag Manager, where basically you get a snippet and you can change the naming of it to be whatever coverage you want. So we have like um, five AI tools landing page variation. This one is five AI tools landing page variation two. So it's just a totally different um, uh, naming that we throw in here. And you basically just throw that tracking script here and you just change the name here. Um, so it's basically this obviously only fires when someone views that page. So you have 100% confidence, okay, I know these numbers are accurate because they looked at this page, this event fired. Um, and what you're able to do is build really simple um, funnel flows. And we used to do this with Facebook. Uh, Facebook allowed us to build this, but uh, they got rid of that feature. So Mixpanel is totally free, guys, too. Like We're using it for a ton of clients. Um, and yeah, it's just super simple to use. You go into reports, funnels. And you can literally just start building it. So, you know, let's say we want to do five AI tools landing page. Um, and then we're sending traffic to uh, viewed content. Or, uh, sorry, we're going to do complete registration. Uh, where are you? Submit. Uh, there we go. Opt in. Um, and then let's add a new event. So then after that, it's going to be viewed content. And then the last one. The last page we send them to is submit application. So there's that funnel flow. Um, and then the cool thing is what we can do is do an event comparison. And on those pages that we're testing, we can do a uh, variation test. So um, here's a version that we were testing to, um, which is uh, this variation right here. Um, the current that we're testing is landing page variation and then variation two. So you can see it's converting a little bit better. Um, but the cool thing is it allows you to see how that person basically goes to your funnel through that uh, landing page. So they both landed on um, two different pages. So the normal variation in this one and the difference between these two, um, Caleb and Dakota is okay if I share that or the you don't pages. need to, yeah, since it is a client of ours, you don't need to share the actual page, but just kind of describe the changes is good. Totally. That you made. So yeah. The main change here is actually the third, third change to um, landing pages that we haven't talked about yet, which is the actual content flow. So on this variation, um, the only thing we changed was, or sorry, on this variation, the new one, 
The only thing we changed was getting rid of the button pop when someone goes to submit their opt-in information. And instead, the fields are already there, similar to mm. uh, this right here. Yeah. Um, whereas so the before control, it was popping up, right? Yep, before Got it was it. just no email here. You click the button and then a drop down pops and then you have to fill out your information. So what we're finding is it's converting a little bit higher for uh, just throwing the three email or the phone name uh, and email fields already there. So that's converting a little bit higher. But it's interesting to look at their process down the funnel. So it still mm -hmm. converts higher than the control. So the first variation that we ran, second's doing better um, just because of that top of funnel conversion. But it's interesting to note that the people who watch the VSL and then go to the submission uh, for an application page um, is actually almost half of the amount that uh, come from the, the first variation. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting to keep a pulse on that. And that's definitely something that we'll probably run another split test on this page too, um, on the right. VSL page yep. to try to get that up higher. But so uh, I, I, I want to just jump in really quick, Ryan. So like for those watching, what, what he just kind of highlighted here is the importance of understanding the journey of the lead. Because if you were split testing simply off of that opt-in page, you would be like, oh, dang, well, this, this page is not converting better. But what, you're, what you've like maybe not realized if you don't have access to this type of data is that sure, maybe this first page that I, I tweaked on, maybe that's converting better. But those people who are coming from that page, they're now dropping off later on in the funnel, right? So mm -hmm. it might not be producing better quality leads in the end, right? So that's why something mm -hmm. like this is so, so, so powerful. Um, and then one other thing I just wanted to add to this as well is that even just taking split testing totally out of the discussion, using something like mixed panel is so great for being able to pinpoint where your funnel needs improvements, right? Yeah. So like it, it, it's so it's so easy sometimes for people to like miss that like a certain page is, is not hitting certain KPIs or it's not performing where it should. And so if you're like a marketer or you're a business owner and your funnel isn't producing the results that you want, having something like this can tell you which page specifically isn't doing the job that it needs to do. Right. So, yep. so, um, I don't know, just, just something that's like, it's vital to have this kind of information at your fingertips. So totally. And it's yep. free. So and it's free. It's totally free. Yep. Cool. Um, that's awesome. Expensive. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, guys, we went over kind of some of the main things, uh, to, to test when you're split testing on the landing page. Uh, we went over mix panel, showed you guys a free tool that we actually use at ad class and highly recommend. Um, Dakota, Ryan, any, any final, any final thoughts, my dudes? I will say pro tip from the squad. When you're testing only test one thing at a time, yes. only like, this is tying back to what Dakota said in the beginning. Um, whether that's messaging or um, the design or the way that your content is uh, flowed. So like the pop-up, I'm um, adding a widget on testimonials, stuff like that. You only want to test one thing at a time. Um, yes. So that you know for a fact, okay, I'm testing a new headline this time and now it's converting lower. Mm -hmm. It was the headline. I'm testing a widget that has testimonials. Now it's converting 10 times better. That would be amazing. 10 times better. It's probably not possible. Um, <laughs> 10%. Never say never. never in our dreams. <laughs> um, so now you know. Ryan, what would you say though if somebody said, Hey, can I split test something on my landing page and also my next page in my funnel, my VSL? Ooh, uh, that's toughy. I'd say it's a little complicated, right? Yeah, I would say, I mean, it's possible you can do that, but I would say, why, why rush into that when you can take all the sweet time in the world, focus on your landing page once you know, okay. This is working. I like this messaging. Yeah. Now switch to your VSL and start experimenting with, you know, new button pops, um, colors, new messaging on your um, on your CTAs on that page, maybe changing the intros on your, your videos, um, all that fun jazz. Yeah. And if you want to get really fancy, changing stuff on your schedule page, application page later down the road. Absolutely. Yeah. And if, and if, you know, if you're out there wondering like, uh, well, I don't know what to split test, right. I don't know what to split test. Where should I even start? 
uh, hop into our free group, ad class, learn how to turn ads into profit. It's a free group. It's linked. If you're not in the group, some of you are watching from the group already. If you're not in the group, if you're coming from my Facebook profile or the ad class page, or you're just seeing this somewhere, YouTube, wherever it is down the line, go to facebook.com slash free ad class, join the group, literally show us your funnel in that group, right? Paste your funnel links, paste what you're working with, paste your KPIs if you know them, your key performance indicators in there. We will give you a free audit on that funnel and tell you what you should be split testing. So just throw it in there. We would love to help. Um, that's what we're here for. This is all free, free Fridays, free Freaky Fridays. Ryan, we appreciate you so much for joining. We know you're a busy guy. We know we've got you hard at work on a bajillion things. So seriously, thank you for being here. Um, this was really helpful. If anybody has any questions, throw them in the chat. We'll get back to you. Um, and uh, that's it. That's all I got. Caleb, how you, how you feeling? You feeling complete, Caleb? I feel so complete. Thanks for joining us, guys. Happy Friday to you. Hope you guys have a blessed weekend. And thank you, Ryan, for joining us, man. Much, much appreciated. Catch you guys on the next one. Got it. Peace. Peace. Peace.